and the topic is load balancer you can see how a physical load balancer looks like so in today's video we'll discuss what is a load balancer its various types what is meant by scaling a load balancer and different types of algorithms of load balancer so here we designed our own weighted round robin algorithms okay let's look at the different types of load balancers okay so there are two types of scaling one is vertical scaling and the other is horizontal scaling Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are diving into an essential component of system design basics. Uh, that's the key to handling traffic for large scale application. And the topic is load balancer. So ever wondered how your favorite website can handle millions of users without crashing? Well, that's where load balancing comes in. So this is our third video on the system design basics playlist where we cover all essential high level as well as the low level system design concepts in detail. So check the other videos on, in this playlist. So in today's video, we'll discuss what is a load balancer, its various types, what is meant by scaling a load balancer and different types of algorithms of load balancer. So let's get started. So let's start with the basics first. So what exactly is a load balancer? Well, imagine a restaurant on a busy Friday night, okay? So if all the customers go to one counter to place their orders, there will be too much chaos and you know noise, right? But if the orders are distributed among several counters, things can flow much more smoothly. So a load balancer works the same way. It's a tool that, uh, that distributes incoming traffic across multiple servers so that no single server um, gets overwhelmed. So in tech terms, it's like a traffic controller. Answering requests are directed evenly and efficiently to the target servers or a pool of servers. So without, without a load balancer, a server might get overloaded. Let's say we do not have a load balancer. So it, it is possible that all the requests will go to a single uh, server, which will flood the server, right? and the server will get overloaded, which can cause delays and even crashes can also happen in the server. But with load balancing, traffic gets spread out, which boosts performance, reliability and overall user experience also. Now that we know what a load balancer does, let's look at the different types of load balancers, okay? So each type is suited for specific scenarios and can be chosen based on the needs of your application or system. So we'll break it down into three major types. Uh, that is hardware based, software based and cloud based load balancer. So first one, we have the hardware based load balancer. So these are physical uh, devices like an actual box you would plug into a data center. So they are highly specialized and can handle massive amount of traffic efficiently. Because they are so powerful, uh, they are often used by large enterprises or businesses with uh, very high traffic demands. But they are also expensive and require physical setup. Uh, for example, if I show you, let's uh, open browser and uh, you can see you can see how a physical load balancer looks like. So if you see here, let's open this uh, image for example. You can see there are a lot of ports that are open, right? So from this, you can you know connect the cables to the different servers. So this, this box can act as a load balancer. The load balancer process will be running inside this machine, which will uh, redirect the traffic to different servers. And the different servers can be connected to the load balancer via these ports, via LAN cable, right? So this is how a physical load balancer looks. But if you are a startup and don't want the hassle of managing physical devices, then a hardware based load balancer might not be suitable for you. Okay. So that's where the second type of load balancer comes, which is the software based load balancer. So software based load balancers are applications that you can install on your servers to manage traffic. Okay. So if you have an EC2 machine or a AWS Azure M machine, right, or a VM, so you can install these softwares and that VM itself will act as a load balancer for you. So so the software based load balancers are more flexible and easier to configure, right? And they work well in a virtualized environments like data centers also. So popular examples of software, software based load balancers are uh, Nginx and HAProxy. So they are a great choice for businesses that need flexibility or want to avoid hardware cost. Because in hardware based load balancing, you, ha you have to maintain the physical load balancer which resides in the higher side of the cost, right? Finally, there are uh, cloud based load balancers as well. So these are services provided by cloud cloud providers like AWS, Azure and Google Cloud. So cloud based load balancers are entirely managed by the provider, meaning you don't have to worry about the setup or maintenance or you know it's scaling etc. For example, if you are using let's say ELB or elastic load balancer which is powered by AWS which automatically scales as the traffic increases or decreases. So you don't need to worry anything about its management and all right. So it's, it's also cost effective and especially for companies that don't want to manage their own uh, load balancers, opting a cloud-based load balancer is often a great choice. Okay, now let me go to this uh, previous slide. Now we talked about the different types of the load balancer. 
But what happens if the traffic keeps growing? Let's say we have a lot of users that come like this, right? So the number of requests increases, okay, with the increase in number of the users. So how do you make sure that our load balancer can keep this, uh, keep up with this uh, increased load, sudden increase in load? This, this brings us to the third concept, which is scaling the load balancer. Now let me just change the slide. To handle more traffic, load balancers themselves can be scaled vertically or horizontally. So there are two types of scaling. One is vertical scaling and the other is horizontal scaling. So vertical scaling means upgrading the power of the load balancer by adding some more resources like the CPU or memory or the both. Imagine a restaurant with just, you know, one cashier, but um, hiring someone with a super, with, with some super fast skills and some advanced skills. So if you see here, we have increased the RAM of this uh, load balancer from 8 GB to 16 GB and CPU from 4 core to 8 core CPU, right? So this is what vertical scaling means. Basically, you are increasing the capacity of your existing load balancer and adding more capacity in terms of RAM and CPU. But in case of horizontal scaling, this is on the other hand involves adding more load balancers to the system. Okay, it's not about, you know, increasing the capacity of the single uh, load balancer instance, rather uh, in including more load balancers instance, it can be of the same size or different size also. So it's like you can imagine adding more cashiers, okay, to handle the transaction in your restaurant instead of having a single highly specialized, uh, you know, cashier. So this method is generally more flexible and widely used. Uh, in cloud-based environment. So we'll often use horizontal scaling instead of vertical scaling. So this is a brief about the vertical scaling and horizontal scaling and how does it work actually, okay? So scaling helps ensure that no matter the traffic or the volume of the traffic, our system remains responsive and resilient. So, so finally, let me just change the slide and let's talk about the final topic that is different type of load balancing algorithms. So this, uh, these algorithms determine how the load balancer decides which server should handle the next request, right? No doubt we have multiple servers. We have 10 servers at our hand, but how the load balancer decides like which server to send a, send a particular request to. So there are multiple algorithms that are present for load balancing. So let's go over some popular ones. So you get a sense of how they work. So we'll discuss about four type of load balancing algorithms that are round robin list connections and ip hashed and weighted round robin uh, round robin algorithms so first up is the round robin algorithm so here the load balancer sends each incoming request to the next server in line one by one like it's, it's in a sequential manner like dealing cards in a game right so this ensures, ensures that every server gets a fair share of the load so let's say we have three servers here right so the load balancer sends the blue request to server one then the pink request to server two then the red request to server 3, then the green request it will again send to the server 1 because sequentially it is processing 1, 2, 3, then again to the first server 1. So uh, it solves this request in a round robin or sequential manner. So if you if you see here, it's quite simple and effective for servers with similar capacity. But if one of the server is faster than other, let's say we have uh, capacity of this server is more than capacity of this or capacity of this server is more than capacity of this, then it is possible that this server will process request faster and may sit idle for some time, right? While this uh, server has low, lower capacity than this, so it might take some more time to process. So this server might feel overloaded, right? While this remains idle. So in those scenario, this kind of, this kind of round robin algorithms is not usually preferred. So the next uh, load balancing algorithm we have is the list connections algorithm. Uh, so this algorithm routes traffic to the server with the fewest active connections. Okay, at that particular uh, point of time. Imagine a line is at a gro grocery store. You'd want to join the line with the fewest people, right? I mean, where you see the, I mean, where you see the line is the, line has the uh, lowest number of people, you want to go and join that line. So it works that way only. Uh, so this approach helps ensure request go to the servers that can handle them more, more quickly. Uh, for example, let's say we have two servers. Let me just remove this one. Let's say we have these two servers and uh, We have four requests to process, right? Let's say we have four user requests to process. So how the least connections based load balancing algorithm will work? It will see both the servers are uh, free, right? Or they are sitting idle. So it will route the first request to this server, server number one. Then uh, for the second request, for the green, uh, for the let's say green request, what do you see? We have two servers present here, but one system, one server is already having one active connection present with it. So it will then route the green request to this server number two. Now, then it will route the pink request to server number one again, because 
both the servers are having same number of connections so it will pick one randomly now for the red request if you see server 1 is having two active connections and server 1 or uh, server 2 is having one active connection so in this case this uh, list connection based algorithm will route this red request to server number 2 so this is how list connection uh, list connections load balancing algorithm works then we have the ip hash algorithm here the load balancer takes the client's ip address so basically the request that is coming right it will use its ip address associated associated ip address and based on a hashing function basically this ip address will be passed to a you know hash function which will spit out a particular number let's say okay like which server to this router request to right so let's say we have another server here so as you discussed this ip will be passed to a hash function which will spit out a number the number is nothing but the server number to which the request should be routed so this way the same user can consistently go to the same server because every time the ip if the ip address doesn't change for the client the hash function will uh, spit out the same server number right so the request will go to the same server always which is useful for applications that need to maintain sessions or sticky sessions okay focus on this term six sticky sessions now what does sticky sessions means sticky sessions means connecting a particular client to a particular server and maintaining the session so that let's say user let's say uh, reloads the page or resends the request again it should not go to any other server rather it should go to the same server to to which the first request had gone for that particular client so in many many scenario will come across this uh, sticky sessions requirement where you want the client to connect to the same server in case he gets disconnected and uh, tries to reconnect again for example let's say you have an uh, online image editor application okay uh, if a client or a user is coming and editing uh, one of his image in in your application and somehow he gets disconnected right and he represses the page so you would want him to connect to the same server again so that his previous changes or the edits that he had made to his image right uh, those are not lost and he can continue from that from that point of time so in this type of scenarios uh, ip hash based load balancing algorithms works uh, perfectly perfectly fine okay lastly we have this weighted round robin algorithm so this is a twist on the round robin algorithm which we discussed uh, first so this is in this algorithm each server is assigned a weight okay based on its capacity for example a more powerful server might handle two requests for every one request sent to a less powerful server. So this allows load balancers to account for server differences or the capacity difference between servers. For example, let's say if we have 4 GB RAM for do these two servers, okay, and 6 GB RAM for uh, this server, definitely this server has the uh, high, highest capacity, right, among these three. So in this case, in uh, weighted round robin case, the blue, blue request can go to server 1 in the pink and red request this pink and red request can go to server 2 as it has higher capacity and then the green request will go to server number 3 however there are very various ways to determine the weight of for a server you could consider uh, various parameters like ram capacity of a server its cpu capacity its processor type the ssd capacity or the ssd storage that it, that it has so based on these parameters you can devise an algorithm we generate a weight for a server okay and based on that weight you can uh, you know determine how many parallel requests to send to a particular server to maybe we'll discuss about uh, this weighted round robin algorithm in detail in another video however we have developed a load balancer and a service discovery tool named sarcader which is developed using python and we have used weighted round robin algorithm there so if you go to google and type sarcader pip you'll get this link and here it is so so along with uh, monik we had developed this uh, module okay so here we designed our own weighted round robin algorithms okay you can go uh, go to the complete uh, technical documentation here and uh, ch uh, check it out for for more information here here you can find the documentation as well as the code also and the details about the algorithms that we have used and how did we design our own you know uh, weighted round robin algorithm everything is mentioned here so you can uh, go and check it out okay so to summarize load balancers are critical for distributing traffic and ensuring reliability in a system we talked about different types of load balancers like hardware software or cloud based load balancer each with its own strengths and use cases we also discussed how scaling works in load balancing where we can either increase a load balancer's power or capacity or add more load balancers of the same capacity to handle uh, you know more large number of uh, request or large number of load and finally we looked at different kind of load balancing algorithms like uh, round robin list connections ip hash based algorithm and uh, weighted round robin algorithm which help determine how the traffic gets distributed right among servers 
Note that all these algorithms are applicable to all types of load balancers that we saw, uh, like uh, hardware based, cloud based, okay, and then apka software based. Okay. It's applicable for all types of load balancer, right? So, understanding load balancer is essential for anyone interested in system design. So, this is one of the basics that you, uh, that you should know and learn. So, if you found this video helpful, please uh, share this video, like this video, and subscribe to my channel for more such content about system design. And if you have any questions, or other system design topics that you would like us to cover, drop a comment below. Also check out my playlist on system design, where you combine system design concepts with real life use cases. Click on the eye icon above to explore the playlist. Also you can check out my other playlist uh, named learn out of the box, where we discuss you know various kind of interesting topics like you, you see here in this list. So check this playlist also, you will find interesting topics uh, covered there. Okay. So if you got any doubts about whatever we discussed in this video, put them in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer them. So we're targeting to reach 1800 subscribers by the end of this month. So keep supporting. Uh, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.